Hello everyone uh, and welcome to this video about eating for weight loss. My name is Mimi Tan. I am a board certified general surgeon and I specialize in bariatric surgery. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with the term, bariatrics is the medicine of preventing and treating weight loss. While I am a surgeon primarily, I do spend a lot of time actually talking to patients and counseling patients about how to eat in a way that is conducive for weight loss. Um, and so this video is actually a lot of what I end up discussing with my patients when they come to me looking for help. So there are a lot of diet plans out there. It's really great to have a lot of options kind of play around, see what works best for you. Um, some people will find certain diets just better for them, for their lifestyle and for their preferences. Now, what I hear though over and over and over from my patients is that oftentimes they are actually quite successful in losing that weight initially, but the difficult part is actually keeping that weight off long-term. And this can be for a lot of different reasons. Some of these diets are just very restrictive um, and other diets can also be very expensive as well. So when my patients come to me for advice, I really try to shift it away from this mentality of dieting and having a lot of rules associated with dieting and shift it more towards just forming habits over time that you can sustain longer term. Granted, the weight loss with this method does tend to work a little bit more slowly than a lot of those crash diets that are out there, but the idea is that those results will stay for a longer period of time. And I really try to make things as simple as possible, right? Um, there's a lot that we do not know um, about diet and weight loss. So I really, really try to boil it down to things that either one, I have found personally effective um, for patients and working with them, or what we know and is supported by just current knowledge um, within the world of bariatric medicine and nutritional science. When it comes to what you eat, there are three big things that I recommend you pay attention to. The first is protein intake, the second is carbohydrate intake, and the third is intake of what I call micronutrient-rich foods. But let's start with protein intake. I recommend roughly 100 grams of protein per day to your typical person. It does vary from person to person, but typically 100 grams is a good starting point. There's a lot out there these days about how we should be eating more protein in our diets, but I don't think it's super clear as to why that is the case. And so let's break it down a little bit. Protein provides what we call a quote unquote metabolic advantage. Simply, it takes your body more energy, i.e. calories, to metabolize protein. And so in a lot of ways by eating protein, you are increasing your metabolism. Protein also has the benefit of potentially keeping you fuller longer and makes you fuller a little bit earlier than some of the other macronutrients, which are going to be fat and carbohydrates. So for all of those reasons, it is important to actually eat a good amount of protein every day. One pitfall that I see happens is a lot of protein rich foods also tend to be very high in fat and high in calories as well. And so for that reason, I recommend really leaning more towards um, lean proteins, things like chicken, fish, beans, and whatnot. Right, let's move on to the next one, calorie intake. Unfortunately, when it comes to weight loss, a huge factor is simply going to be calories in and calories out. So I recommend when you're starting out, by calculating how many calories you're eating right now on an average day, and then just subtracting a few hundred calories. What I do not recommend is going too restrictive initially. So if you're eating 2,500 calories on your typical day, don't go straight to a thousand calories. Um, that is just gonna be too restrictive and you're not gonna be able to follow it long-term. By 
kind of doing that a little bit more gradually, you can always adjust things as you move forward as well. So we've talked about protein, we've talked about calories. The last component is what I call eating micronutrient rich foods, which is essentially eating a lot of vegetables. Vegetables are great because they're naturally rich in vitamins and they're very low calorie and they tend to be also high in fiber, which is important for your body as well. Um, so for that reason, I tell people that vegetables are free. Now let's go over a few tips for success uh, in this process. First of all, I do recommend tracking. Um, it is not fun, but tracking does hold you accountable and it does provide you data over time that you can look back on and reflect upon. I don't think you have to do it forever, but at least when you're starting out and kind of getting used to this process, it is very, very helpful. Now tracking can be done a number of different ways. And so I think you should find what works well for you. A lot of people like using the apps. Um, I particularly like the chronometer app. Um, other apps that people really enjoy are gonna be very tastic. And then MyFitnessPal is a really popular one as well. Now apps are not for everyone. I understand that. You might just want to keep a journal with you um, and just write down what you're eating day to day. Now, if you do not want to keep that journal physically with you all day, every day, another thing that you can do is just take a picture of whatever meal you're eating or whatever snack you're eating throughout the day, and then just log those things in your journal at the end of the day. Second tip that I have for you is spend some time learning what a portion size looks like. When you have a big bag of snacks or whatever, actually look at the serving size count things out, measure things out, and then put it on a plate or a bowl. Again, you don't have to do this forever, but while you're learning through this process, again, it is important to kind of recalibrate your brain so that you understand what an appropriate sized meal or an appropriate sized snack is. My third tip is to eat throughout the day. Now this might be a little bit counterintuitive, but we've all had those really busy days where at the end of the day, you're tired and you're extremely hungry. And those are the times where you are going to be making bad food choices and you're gonna be overeating as well. And so it is important to eat throughout the day to try to avoid those moments of extreme hunger. And then my last tip, it's, it's not really a tip, but um, weight loss is extremely hard. And for anyone who tells you differently, they have never actually struggled with their weight. Failures or what we think are failures are normal. Um, and honestly, weight loss with diet successfully is often the exception and not the rule. And so give yourself some grace, um, give yourself some forgiveness. Um, and if you're struggling particularly hard, there is evidence that Having support from a medical provider does increase your chance of success when it comes to losing weight successfully with diet. So if you are struggling, I would recommend that you reach out to a provider that you trust or re reach out to a weight loss specialty, specialty clinic like ours at Aviva. That extra support can really make the difference for some people when it comes to weight loss. <laughs> So that's a lot of information. Let's just briefly review what we've gone over. Um, 100 grams of protein every day. Counting calories is important, at least when you're starting out. Eat lots of veggies. Track your food intake when you're first starting out as well. Learn what portion sizes look like. Eat throughout the day. And then seek support when you need it. We're here to help. Thanks for watching this video. This is going to be part of a series of videos moving forward, so stay tuned. All right, bye.